Thank you. John, everybody, as yeah. I, I, was, I was talking to you before, um, as I said, when I was standing over there, uh, Donald Trump today um, just totally trumped it up. He was, um, he was trumping it trumpily, and uh, he just trumped the hell out of it. <laughs> and you know, um, I don't know. I don't. Uh... You okay, buddy? <laughs> He seems sad. My buddy seems sad. Well, I just came out of Every day you got, you, got, you got the new things that Trump does, and it just, you know, it just it wears you down. I don't bit. know what you're talking about, but <laughs> you know what? Why don't you relax at my place? Let me, let me take this for a bit. Let me talk to Trump. Let me see if I can oh, talk to Trump. Okay, I'll talk to him. Yeah, oh my just... God, look at that. You put a new roof on the pool. House. Exactly. Yeah, please go down. You put in a croquet pavilion. Yeah. I know where I'm spending my vacation. All right, I'm rolling deep, baby. So, uh, wait. Which camera is the one that goes to the president? Three, two, one, boom. <laughs> Hello, Donald. <laughs> it's me, the guy you made sure everyone knew was Jewish on Twitter. <laughs> I know you're upset about all the criticism you've been taking in the fake news and the fake late-night shows. It's just we're all still having a little trouble adjusting to your presidency as it goes into its 500th year. <laughs> you know, it just, it just, it's, it's, everything's off its axis. It's a little unusual. Apparently now uh, Putin and Kim Jong-un are noble, intelligent role models and Canada's a bunch of giant ass like, that's hard to get used to. You're redoing the post-war alliances, only this time we're with the Axis powers. But <laughs> I, I just want to say if there's one hallmark to your presidency that I think we're finding the most difficult is that no matter what you do, it always comes with an extra layer of gleeful cruelty and dickishness. <laughs> it's, it's not just that... It's, it's not just that you don't want people taking a knee, it's that they're sons of bitches if they do. It's not just denying women who accuse you of a sexual assault, it's saying well, they were too ugly anyway. You can't just be against the media, they're enemies of the people. It's not even partisan. Anyone in the Republican Party dare speak against you, they also must be humiliated, even if they have a terminal disease. Which brings us to immigration. Boy, you <laughs> that up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's the seminal example of the Trump doctrine. Its goal best expressed by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of the women. Yes. <laughs> You're only happy if you hear the lamentations of the women. <laughs> Donald, you could have absolutely made a more stringent border policy that would have made your point about enforcement. But I guess it wouldn't have felt right without a Dickensian level of villainy. You casually separated people seeking asylum from their children, from babies. It made me realize something. You may be orange. <laughs> you may like hamburgers. You may be a clown. But you are no Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to say it. It's true. So look, you're a businessman, all right? Let's negotiate for just an end to this gratuitous dickishness. Well, what, what can we give you? You dig the dictator thing? How about we give you a giant building with gold toilets and your name on it in giant letters that are... That's where he lived? All right, how about we give you a whole 
news network. They'll spend 24 hours a day praising everything you do. <laughs> Named for a small animal? <laughs> Damn it. All right, let's just go full on arch villain. How about we have a volcano destroy a large portion of the home state of your enemy, Barack Obama? That way. <laughs> he f destroyed Hawaii? All right, this is it. Clearly, clearly, we're not going to be able to negotiate or shame you into decency. But there is one place where I draw the line. I won't allow you and your sycophants to turn your cruelty into virtue. The president is a fighter. He's tough. He's a fighter. He's a strong leader. And he's somebody who deeply loves this country. He is a very compassionate human being. Donald Trump is the exact right leader we need at this frightening time to make sure that America still leads. Well, Donald Trump is not a racist. He talks like a guy from Queens. Donald Trump talks like the majority of the, the American people talk. The majority of the American people aren't ass. <laughs> He doesn't talk like the majority. He doesn't talk like the majority of the American people. He talks more like a gerrymandered minority that shrewdly played the Electoral College. You know, as Lincoln once said, no? As the great Abraham Lincoln once said, I am the least racist person you've ever met. The blacks, they love me. <laughs> Sorry, that was you. But what Lincoln said in his Cooper Union speech was to point out the one thing Southern slaveholders really wanted from the free states. This and only this. Cease to call slavery wrong and join them in calling it right. It was on this point that Lincoln said the Union could not bend. And what Donald Trump wants is for us to stop calling his cruelty and fear and divisiveness wrong, but to join him in calling it right. And this we cannot do. And by not yielding, and by not yielding, and I say, by not yielding, we will prevail. Unless, of course, the Democratic leaders have committed to be a bunch of feckless. Got, got stored, everybody. Oh